Hi there, welcome to this second class. Today we will start with an exercise because it's very important that you are familiar with the computation of the VAR. So let's read the text of the problem. A one-year project has a 94% probability of leading to a gain of 5 million, a 3% chance of a gain of 2 million euros, and a 2% chance of leading to a loss of 3 million, and a 1% chance of producing a loss of 8 million. The question is, what is the VAR at alpha level 0 0.98, so the 98% VAR, and what happens if alpha is 0 0.99? To solve this type of exercises, it may be convenient, at least at the very beginning, to write all the data we have in table format. Our table starts with three columns, losses, probability as a percentage, and probability as a decimal. Losses must be sorted from the smallest to the largest. We can use quantities in million. A gain of 5 corresponds to a loss of minus 5. The same for a gain of 2. Then we have 3 and 8 for actual losses. To every loss, we can associate the corresponding probability as a percentage and as a decimal. We then add a fourth column containing the cumulative probabilities as decimals. 0 0.94, 0 0.97, 0 0.99, and 1. Thanks to this table, we can now draw the empirical cumulative distribution function of losses. On the x-axis, we put losses. On the y-axis, the cumulative probabilities. For reasons of space, the scale of the y-axis is not really representative here. Now, we start with the smallest loss, minus 5. The corresponding cumulative probability is 0 0.94. This means that we can draw a vertical segment going from the x-axis in minus 5 to the point minus 5, 0 0.94. Then, we know that the cumulative probability does not change until we reach minus 2, where it increases to 0 0.97. Hence, we first have a horizontal segment and then a vertical one. And so on, so that we can draw the entire empirical cumulative distribution function, also known as ECDF. Now, the first question asks us to find the 1 year 0 0.98 VAR. The trick is really simple. Let's consider the y axis. Is 0 0.98 there? No, but we can add it between 0 0.97 and 0 0.99. Now, let's draw a dotted horizontal line passing through 0 0.98. In which point does this line cross the empirical cumulative distribution function? Here. And this point corresponds to a loss of 3. This is our 0 0.98 VAR. Fine. For the 0 0.99 VAR, we do the same, and 0 0.99 is already in our plot. Good. Let's draw the horizontal line. Wait a minute. The line does not cross the ACDF. It overlaps for an entire segment, from loss 3 to loss 8. So, what's the VAR? Here, we can use a convention. In situations like this, the VAR corresponds to the average loss in the segment. This means that we can compute 8 plus 3 equal to 11, and then we divide by 2. The 99% VAR is 5.5. Good, we have solved our problem. Another type of VAR which is often used is the so-called mean VAR. That is to say, the VAR centered around the mean of the loss distribution. It is simply given by the difference between the VAR and the mean mu. As we will see later on, the mean VAR is used to determine the economic capital against losses in loans.
If we assume a specific distribution for the loss distribution, we can obtain special formulas for the VAR. For example, for a Gaussian distribution, the VAR is simply computable using the quantile function of a standard Gaussian, that is to say, a normal 0, 1. The VAR alpha for a normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma is equal to mu plus sigma times the alpha quantile of a standard Gaussian. For the mean VAR, naturally, the mu term disappears. And this is the formula if the loss distribution is a T distribution. Please notice the notation. VAR in small letters is the variance and not the value at risk. And now another exercise. We know that the historical one-year loss distribution for our portfolio of loans is well approximated by a normal 10-5 that is to say, a normal distribution with mean mu equal to 10 and standard deviation sigma equal to 5. Now, the question is, what are the 95 and the 98% VARs? To solve this exercise, we can use the standard normal tables, or R. The 0 0.95 quantile of a standard Gaussian is 1.6648. This is the threshold value below which 95% of all observations lie according to a standard Gaussian. The 98% quantile is 2.0537. These quantiles can be computed in R using the QNORM function. If you just type QNORM 0.95, you get the quantile of the standard Gaussian. However, notice that you can also write Q norm 0 0.95, 10, 5. In this case, the quantile is directly computed from a normal 10, 5. 18.2243 is the value of our 95% VAR. We can obtain this directly from Q norm or using the formula in slide 4. For the 98% VAR, the reasoning is exactly the same. Now, assume that things go bad and that we can observe a loss which is greater than our VAR alpha. Now, a natural question we may want to answer is the following. What's the expected loss? The expected shortfall is the statistical quantity that tries to answer this question. From a statistical point of view, the expected shortfall at level alpha is a sort of mean excess function, that is to say, the average value of all the values exceeding a special threshold, the var alpha. Why is the expected shortfall important? Simple. Two loss distributions may have the same value of var alpha, but two different expected shortfalls. This is due to the fact that the shape of the right tail may be different. For example, if we compare the two pictures, we can expect the expected shortfall of the right-hand side distribution to be larger. Given that, this distribution assigns a higher probability to larger losses values. Let's consider a last exercise to understand how we can compute the expected shortfall. A portfolio of loans may lead to the losses in the table. What is the expected shortfall for alpha equal to 0.95? And for alpha equal to 0 0.99, by the way, what is the 95% VAR in this case? Can you see it immediately? To compute the expected shortfall, the trick is to sort the losses as usual. Then we start from the bottom, that is to say from the largest losses and we go backward, summing the corresponding probabilities until we reach the 1 minus alpha level. If alpha is 95%, then 1 minus alpha is 5%. Look at the table. 
the 25 million loss has a chance of 0.5%. Is this equal to 5%? No. Hence, we sum the probability of the 20 million loss, getting 3%. Is this equal to 5%? Not yet. Therefore, we also sum the probability of the 12 million loss. Now, the total is 0 0.5 plus 2.5 plus 2 equal to 5. Here we are, summing the three largest losses, the total probability is 5%. The 95% expected shortfall is nothing more than the weighted average of these three losses, where the weights are their occurrence probabilities and the denominator is 5%, 1 minus alpha. Our expected shortfall is therefore 17.3 million. In the 99% case, things are a little bit different. If we sum 0.5%, the probability of a loss of 25 million, with 2.5% for a loss of 20 million, the result is greater than 1%, our 1 minus alpha. So what? In this case, we only have to consider the part of the 20 million loss probability that together with initial 0.5% of the 25 million loss, sums up to 1%. This quantity is clearly another 0.5%. Hence, the 99% expected shortfall is computed as 20 times 0.05 plus 25 times 0.05 over 0.01. The result is 22.5 million. As you can imagine, even for the expected shortfall, we can obtain special closed formulas, depending on the theoretical loss distribution we assume. This is what we get for a Gaussian distribution. Ok, this has been a rather long class. It is time to stop. See you next time. Bye!